Yo everyone, what's going on? Curryway here, and today I have a really awesome run to show you from Dugile that just happened at the time of recording this last night while I was sleeping. This is the new second place run by only six seconds, and I wanted to show you this run because I think there's a lot of unique things that Dugile does in this run that really shows what top level gameplay looks like at this point that's just really fascinating so this is going to be more of in-depth stuff we're going to do a little bit of pausing i'm going to show you what's going on and let's just get right into it again like i said insanely incredible run make sure you go check out dugal in the description and let's start watching this run so as you're probably familiar with at this point buried treasure seeds for minecraft speedrunning are the norm and are just the absolute best runs it's not even really a discussion anymore you can see Dugal's a little bit confused at first because this buried treasure is actually underneath a different part of the island which is super interesting and is very rare to happen so Dugal got a little bit confused there but is still able to find it which is very nice grabs two diamonds eight iron and one piece of gold now here is the first interesting thing that happens so Dugal can do a couple things he's gonna break a piece of wood here because he wants to get a button to place his tnt and blow up the tnt but the thing that's interesting is the amount of items that he has. So two diamonds is a diamond sword. One gold could be a gold shovel, or he could just use the iron for a gold shovel. But he cannot make an axe. So that's something that I want to have be very, very clear. It's also important to note that he got eight salmon, which is the most you can get. Sam eight salmon is the best food you can get from a shipwreck. Dugal is just going to grab this TNT. Really nice TNT. Takes no damage. 11 wood 14 whole wood so amazing spot for tnt and then look at this craft in here he's gonna craft a bunch of stuff but look at what he doesn't craft he's about to craft his doors he's done with his tools so he crafted iron pickaxe iron shovel diamond sword now crafting the gold is not really it's not that big of a deal it's like slightly faster on a shovel but it gives you a trade opportunity or a way to distract piglins which is totally fine but he is not crafting an axe and he's making that play from my view as someone who's obviously not as good as Dugile at this point, but as someone who understands the high level game, he's doing this because he has so much wood and so many blocks that he doesn't care about using an axe. He can basically play this like it's a UHC. If you've ever seen how people in UHCs play where they make like tons of crafting tables when they need them, because realistically in a speedrun, Dugal needs a crafting table like two times. He needs it here and he needs it when he crafts his bed and explosives for the end. So he's going to craft his door, his boat, and leaves the crafting table. And this is the first time I've really ever seen this in a run that has actually completed. So this is a super, super interesting tech. He gets the flint right away, has his magma ravine, and is going to be entering the nether here in an absurd pace, like sub 120. Dugal's portals are also just absolutely next level, as you can see. Very, very slight mishap, but again, with the speed he's going at, that's like not unheard of at all he's gonna spawn in here and we want to look very closely here so he already has an e-ray spike he is going to find it and then he's going to i believe look behind him and see a fortress yes so somewhere there it's hard to tell with the bit rate he sees fortress and it's very apparent because he's going to you know turn I, maybe he sees it here but there is a fortress behind him that he knows about if i remember correctly i've already watched this run he does not pyre in the bastion but here's the thing this bastion is now manhunt so he has to do a manhunt housing route without an axe so insane that you're seeing this he's he's very lucky that these two piglins are are crossbow guys because he has to sit here for like two and a half seconds break this chest without an axe and this is like the only way he can get punished for what he does but still phenomenal game sense to realize okay i'm going for world record slash sub eight I gotta just do what I have to do here. If this is the play I have to make, this is the play I have to make. Gets very lucky with the crossbows, recognizes that he can stick through it and go for it, and then is gonna bridge across this magma, place flint and steel here. That does two things. One, it stops piglins from falling into that spot and hitting him, and two, it helps them pathfind easier into the top of the housing bastion where he's gonna trade with all his pigs. So absolutely bonkers pace from Dugal right now. Two minutes, very low two, already trading with housing pigs phenomenal pace gets so shiny has everything he really needs you know obviously has to get obsidian but has everything he needs at this point all the gold blocks hasn't checked really any chest so there's a good chance of getting obsidian he has tnt so he doesn't even have to craft a bed for blaze bedding which is really nice again a reason why he doesn't have to craft a crafting table right now totally fine 
Another piglin goes in the hole. He's going to check this chest for Obby. And oh my gosh, gets a ton. He actually did get obsidian in the middle chest. I'm sorry. I didn't see it. But now he's going to check for trades instantly. Gets pretty much everything he needs. He's waiting on one piece of Obby. Can organize his inventory while he's doing that. Has a bunch of string as well for a potential zero cycle. And is just waiting. So he's going to eat his food. He's going to overlap pretty much everything he can. Right now he's just clearing out his inventory. Probably going to do a little bit of crafting. There you go. As soon as he sees 20 Obby. Look at this. This is again like top level gameplay. And millisecond like sub second stuff here. He's crafting his dirt. And he knows he was looking at his obsidian while he did that. So he's out instantly. I can't explain how hard this actually is to do. And watching it in real time shows how fast his like game to keyboard slash hands is. It's absolutely absurd. And again, he saw a fortress. It was very hard for us to see with the bitrate and, you know, compression from a Twitch stream and a YouTube video and all that stuff. But he knows exactly where he's going. His pearl throws are very direct. You could see the fortress here. That's probably what he saw when he F5'd originally down in his portal. He probably saw the top part here. And now he's going to lower his render entering the fort. He sees the spawner here. He was playing for strays. Unfortunately, he got wither. So not really able to do anything about that. Sees both spawners. So he's going to eat here, get two blaze rods already. The nice thing about this is if you're familiar with watching Ranked or any of my speedruns, he only needs six blaze rods here, realistically, compared to getting seven or however many you want to get. So he's going to craft up a solid block so he can do TNT here. When I mean solid, I mean a stronger stone type block. And something that I noticed, which I don't know was intentional or not when Dugai was playing the seed that I thought was really unique at this point, is obviously he's playing with not a lot of food this seed has done a, an amazing job at food management by the way has taken like literally zero damage pretty much besides pearl throw so phenomenal food use and a really cool point of this is how he takes no fall damage here so he's jumping off the spawner here which most of the time if you're jumping off the spawner here you're gonna take about a heart of damage but the way he lines it up he is able to kind of slide off the top block and get everything like take no fall damage which is a really 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 high level play if he was actually thinking that in the moment um works out really well he's also clearing out this spawner in a really good way as well so you could see it exploded here the blazes get hit away from the explosion right so he kind of without even killing the blazes created all of the spawning space through the tnt and the blazes aren't taking it up anymore because they're exploded out of the way so he doesn't have to worry about killing these blazes fast at all because he is more prioritized about hey let's open up the spawning space for me to actually stand here instead of the blazes floating over nothing and can then hit this blaze with a sword boom now he has four rods he only needs two more so again he doesn't care about that other blaze he's just waiting for this next four spawn to happen because he cleared out the spawner and he's gonna hope to leave just off this so he gets five rods no rod there and gets a six i believe he went six for seven here maybe six for eight insane pace now we're gonna see another really cool high level play here that some people who aren't as super up to date with a lot of things happening in speedrunning. he's gonna do something called boat boat calculator i don't know if there's like an official word for this but basically what he's doing is the way the calculators work and the way that boats work in minecraft is if you sit in a boat and then get out of the boat and like don't press wasd it'll put you in a more prime location for the calculator and what i mean by that is it kind of puts you in a set point that's not as random where you'll have like multiple decimal places and stuff like that so dugal's standing in a very specific spot here and you can do that whenever you place a boat and then stand up out of it. It's really, really cool tech. Uh, I apologize if I'm explaining it slightly wrong, but that's my understanding as someone who doesn't use a calculator with it. And it's really, really good because it allows for really consistent one eye throw. So when we see Dugal press F3 here, we'll probably notice that his F3 coordinates, oh, he doesn't even open his F3. Wow, that's just insane. Um, <laughs> he doesn't even need to because he just presses F3C. So. He has a perfect one eye throw, basically. You can see on the top left, it's 99% that it's 967 blocks away. And that's the security that you get from doing boat calculated throws like that, comparatively throwing, you know, something where in like Xylanox's world record, he has throws two eyes that are very close to each other. Boat access is very, very consistent as long as it's not like, you know, 2000 plus blocks away. And now this is the part of the run where I actually think takes the most skill. This terrain nav is really, really interesting because Dugal, this is what separates this run from a run like Xylanox's world record is that Xylanox's world record had phenomenal terrain 
to the second portal coordinates. And Dugal has nothing. So he has to make a really, really tough play here entering. We're going to go back. We're not going to watch all this again. But he has to make a really tough play based on this terrain. And he decides, you know what? I'm just going to dig down. There's really not a lot of terrain here. I'm going to go already where I would dig down on my Y coordinate for my nether portal. So he's already at that coordinate. And then he's going to pearl into the space while sprinting. And that's going to allow him to keep sprint momentum while digging and you'll see him doing this little like jump while he's digging and that allows him to be moving quite literally as fast as possible in a situation like this so he's moving as fast as possible in a crawl mode he's digging all the blocks and he is in sync with everything this is not easy it, it honestly looks easy to like you know make sure you're not hitting any other blocks in the way the fact that the most phenomenal part is that right there because sometimes you'll run into quartz you'll run into lava and that'll break your sprint place? but nothing breaks dugile's sprint here until he's standing up again from the terrain so absolutely phenomenal job from dugile and then he just has to get to the exact court so he's going to do another sprint pearl unfortunately this time he didn't get it exactly how he'd like. You can see how much slower he's moving in this dig, and you can actually kind of see it when he throws the pearl. If you watch very closely, you can kind of see how he hits the block in front of them, and that kills all the momentum, right? So now he's digging in a crawl speed slower, and you can see how much the time saved on his first dig. So really well done here. And now all he has to do is build his portal. Doesn't even think twice. Some people, the thing that I, I find really interesting about this is a lot of times runners will hesitate, be like, and panic and be like, oh my God, the terrain isn't perfect. What do I do? Obviously, he I spies. He's going to do preemptive now. Um, sees it down mid, looking for his own spike. And this nav ends up being really, really nice. So he's going to check up here really quick. Doesn't see anything. Here's lava pops goes to the spawner, and is going to do a absolutely phenomenal zero cycle. Before we see the zero cycle, though, I just want to finish up my point on the digging. A lot of times, runners will hesitate and be like, oh my god, the terrain's bad. Where do I go? And try and force it. But if it's something where it's like less than a thousand blocks, it's really not that bad to dig. You could see it probably wasted Dugal. Obviously, if the terrain was better, he saves probably 30, 40 seconds there. But it's, it's not awful, and you can still get an absolutely amazing time, as Dugal did with this run. So now it's time for the zero cycle. Again, did not craft a crafting table or axe the entire run and is now just setting up for zero cycle. Has everything he needs get set up. And I want to point out a lot of people think that I've seen think that this run isn't world record pace at the time he enters. It actually is um, 651 with zero cycle is world record pace when the world record is 745. A normal zero cycle, I should say a, a normal good zero cycle is around 50-ish seconds. You know, somewhere in the 48 to 54 second range is a normal good zero cycle. Um, unfortunately, you could already see Dugal is caged. So Dugal has to deal with that, which is just absolutely lovely. So he has, he's in a cage spawn, but you'll see, if you notice very quickly, this is something that top runners can do, is if you're looking right here, right where my mouse is, my webcam's kind of in the way, but you can see this 58, right? What this 58 means is that's the surface level, if we're looking at the cords here, that's the surface level that he needs to get to, right? That's where the Y level of the top block is if he was standing up there, 58. So what top runners can do is actually pearl through the block and know like, okay, I'm at this block, I need to get to there, and then he pearls through it, and that allows him to get instantly fast. And then, I can't even finish talking about my point, so he pearls through, he's, he's getting set up for zero cycle, already sees it's back 1-8. So he's already just in like chucking pearl mode. But while he's chucking his third pearl, he looks at an enderman. So now he has an enderman chasing him, but obviously he's not going to care because he has to zero cycle. And he has to do a back 1-8 zero cycle, which doing a... So the reason it's called 1-8 is because there's a 1-8 chance of the dragon basically instead of picking the front right tower and the back left tower, instead picking the back the back tower like the back middle tower and the front middle tower these are not i would say quote unquote harder zero cycles from a mechanical point of view but it's something where you need to be aware of other things happening and be like okay it's a one eighth i need to prepare differently and it requires more bridging which thankfully if you're familiar with dugal at all is not going to be a problem because dugal is probably the best bridger in the world on top of being a top five at worst speedrunner right now um, so absolutely phenomenal stuff here from Dugal, not even getting phased by the Enderman. And unfortunately, because of it being caged and looking at an Enderman and it being a back dragon, Dugal can only set up here for Y91. Can we talk really quickly how insane these mechanics are? 
Are you kidding me? Boom. First bed. Second bed. Has to eat. Prepare it up. Third bed. Very clean zero cycle. Fourth bed. Fifth bed. And then sixth bed here. And he gets it in six beds at a very, very low height. But unfortunately, because of a couple things, the reason that this is not actually world record is one, he had to dig up. So he couldn't go to a higher Y height. Two, six beds instead of five. Waste some time, obviously. And then three, the fact that just the dragon's kind of path after, you know, dying wasn't as fast as, you know, you might like. So... Unfortunately, it's not world record. There's, you know, probably five to six seconds of time save here. But if it's a normal, like, front, Dugal can do, like, a 99 height dragon or something, then we're, like, this is probably a 743, 744 type time, which is crazy. But you can see Dugal still is not even done with the run yet. He has to live and not die to this freaking Enderman just to get a PB. So he has to run around the fountain with the Enderman. Absolutely insane. And then he jumps right in. 750. I think it gets retimed as you can see to a 751. Absolutely bonkers run. Huge shout out to Dugal. I hope you enjoyed this little bit of analysis. This was really fun to, to do kind of off the cuff. Um, if you like videos like this, let me know. I'd love to kind of react and talk a bit more about other prominent runs that end up happening in the community. Hope you've been enjoying the content recently, and I'll see you all soon. Peace out, everyone. And remember to check out Dugal. I swear you better check out Dugal.